All right, everyone, welcome to episode 19 of the Future Belongs to Creators. I'm your host, Nathan Berry. I had another co-host, but actually I've totally forgotten his name. Uh, so today, my co-host, my new co-host is Corey Miller. Corey, hey. welcome. Hello, hello. All right, so today we're doing Q&A Friday and uh, we'll answer a bunch of questions we got in advance. We'll answer questions from the chat. But first, we always kick it off with a little red, yellow, green. So Corey, how are you doing today? Uh, you know, today I'm I'm feeling green. Um, a lot of a lot of the last few weeks has been a lot of up and downs with mostly red, a lot of yellows. Um, but I was I was talking with a friend of mine, uh, I guess this morning, and I was just like, you know, today I I feel like the sense of gratitude. Not mm -hmm. necessarily that I'm grateful for any particular thing, but just there's some kind of sense that I have, just the overall feeling that you know, today is all right. You know, and I don't know if that has to do with the fact that I'm on my phone less, looking at the news less, talking with people less. I don't know. Could be any number of things, but I'm today. I think I'm, I think I'm doing okay. I think I'm doing green, going green. It's good. How about you? I'd say yellow today. Generally, like everything's going well. I just can't seem to focus. It's one of those. I'm I'm in these loops of like, let me write this thing, and by write I mean go check Twitter. And right, by yeah. write this, I mean you know, answer this on Slack, where I've like actually a couple times this morning, gotten up from my desk, walked around, and then come back and be like, okay, this time, right, this time I'm going this is to the one. put out this, this Basecamp post. Uh, but I, I've still gotten stuff done. It's just like you know, I've been at the desk for five hours today or something, and not yeah, actually right. accomplished what I'd hoped for. Yeah. Um, on that note, though, I did make a promise to all of our listeners two episodes ago to start a, well, to write in public and to commit to writing every day and keep track of that. Oh, no. So if you go to nathanberry.com slash daily journal, uh, it pulls up my public writing journal, which is just a link to a public notion page. And uh, it has a little note on there that if I don't write that day, if there's something that doesn't show up for a specific day, feel free to at me on Twitter and be like, hey, why haven't you written yet today? So that's me closing that loop as far as- Got it. Uh, Is there like a bounty? So if somebody catches oh, you that you, you give them something? This sounds dangerous. Okay, what should the bounty well, be? <laughs> I don't know, like- you could, you A Chipotle 50 burrito. Bucks. <laughs> 50 <laughs> bucks. <laughs> Why not? It's an incentive. <laughs> Honestly, it's an incentive. Like we, I used to do this thing with my, with my friends whenever we wanted to do and or not do something that we would yep. do some kind of a check-in and it was like for a week. And so if we lost it that week, then we had to pay up. All right. Okay. The first person who catches me for that day. Well, right. Yeah. Not everybody. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm just saying. <laughs> I was like, I mean, the business is doing okay, but like, Corey. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Just for the first. Person. Yeah. Yeah. The first person for a day. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll send you 50 bucks or that sounds good. We'll do it. Yeah, I mean, it won't, so, it won't happen because I won't ever miss that's it. That's what I was about to say. Like, it's not going to be something that actually occurs because just keep writing. Yep, that's good. Easy. All right. Well, uh, let's dive into some questions. So we have a first question from actually our favorite listener, Emily Mills. You can't, you're not supposed to pick favorites. I think you're not supposed to fa pick favorite well, children, but you can definitely well, pick favorite listeners. <laughs> you're not supposed to is what they say. Yeah. <laughs> but you do. You can't, you can't help it. Well, I only have, I've got two kids and two favorites. That's how I saw uh, that problem. Oh, yeah. I should have known something like that was coming. <laughs> okay, so Emily's question, which I think was a good one, is uh, she says, what we end up doing with our lives, so work and hobbies, is usually different than what we dreamed up as young people. I'd like to hear, one, how your dreams and goals have shifted over time, and two, how you've known it's time to pivot, and then three, uh, sharing some feelings from those processes. So... It's a really good question. <laughs> it's a really good question. And, and uh, I guess if we break down and start, like what, maybe at an earlier age, at 10, 12, eight, something like that, what did you want to do with your life? Let's start there. What did I want to do with my life when I was Yeah, three? you go and, and then I'll, well, I'll, I'll just go first because I'm thinking of it. <laughs> okay. I wanted to be a landscaper. So yeah. All right. I, 10 year old me wanted to be like do landscaping. What, um, why? What was the draw to that? Like what, what made you want to do that more than anything else? Uh, I liked being outside. I grew up up in the mountains. We had two acres 
plenty of space and all that. And, and I just love doing those kind of projects. I don't really know beyond that. Hmm. Like it was one of those things that kind of went away after a while. You know what it was? I worked a couple of summers doing landscaping. There you go. Like, <laughs> you did, nope. you did some more of it. Yeah. <laughs> nope. Um, I'm trying to think how things iterated over time. I'll think about that more. What about you? Eight or 10 year old you, what did you want? To yeah. Do? I wanted to, I wanted to be a musician. I wanted to be a rock star. And I, and I should say rock star because there, there's a definitely a difference between wanting to be a musician and wanting to like tour and play big shows and do music videos and be on the radio. Like I was, I was really into that. So when I, when I was 10 years old, I got my first guitar from, or for a Christmas present and uh, only recently told my siblings that I had gone into my sister's room and, and seen the guitar sitting in there. And I, so I'd sneak. So I knew before Christmas that I was getting the guitar. And then when they brought it out to me on Christmas day, I had to pretend to be excited. Right. And then I opened the guitar case and there wasn't a guitar in there. And so they were like, we got you a guitar case for the eventual guitar. But in my head, I'm like, but I knew, but I couldn't tell. I couldn't tell oh, them no. that I knew. So I was like, cool. <laughs> and then they brought it out and it was really exciting. But anyways, total okay. tangent there. So, uh, but so I really wanted, wanted to be a rock star. Yeah, I wanted to be a rock star. Yeah, I wanted to I wanted to go on tour and I wanted to play in big bands in front of, you know, tens of thousands of people. Um, I still kind of have that like little dream somewhere yeah. in there. You know, I like I'd love to play on stage in front of like 10,000 people. Um, I think I've hit the thousand mark, but I, I haven't quite hit the 10,000. Okay. So um, I mean, a thousand is pretty good. Thousand is pretty good. Yeah. Um, long time ago but yeah. yeah so are you still doing music now uh not as much as i'd like to um my, my life has been this kind of yeah give odd... people the uh the 30 or 60 second version of your life in the last 12 months because it's been wild uh okay 2016 <laughs> my wife and i moved to ireland we lived there for three years before they told us that the visa that they had originally given us was the wrong visa, but they wouldn't give us the right visa. So we had to leave Ireland. So all of our stuff is in Dublin right now. I'm currently in Wheaton. Well, we left Dublin. We went to Vienna. We were in Vienna for a while. Then we went to Texas. We were in Texas for a month. And then we went to Illinois. And then we went to California. And then now we're back in Illinois, which is where we are currently is in, in, in Illinois, trying to get back to Dublin, hopefully, and, and live there again. So that's yeah, small little well, pieces. Of all that. <laughs> yeah, and that's where uh, we first met was in Dublin, right? Or had we met before? No, we, we... you know we met back in um, at Sean West conference in 2016. I think that was the first time that we had. That's met. right. And then it yeah. was um, later that year that we I were think in Dublin. So. Yeah, I think it was the next year. Was the next year? Um, you were in Dublin speaking at something. Yeah. And I lived there. And so we just hung out for a couple of hours and then you went and spoke at a thing. And I was like, well, I'll just go home now. <laughs> um, exactly. And then I went home as well. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's good. Um, I, I don't know what kind of led up into that. Question. Oh, I was just oh, get all the stuff. Yeah. Music. So, so I have a guitar here. Um, but all of my recording stuff is, is back in, in storage. And I think that actually kind of plays back into the question. Um, is how things have shifted over time is mm -hmm. because there are certain things that shift not because you make that mental shift yourself, but it just kind of happens, right? So there are things that you do and there are things that happen around you and then how we react to those situations. And, um, you know, my, my, I guess, choice to not pursue music wasn't necessarily necessarily me saying I'm not going to do this thing. It's because other opportunities came up in my life right. or other interests, right? So, you know, for anybody who's watching this and has no clue who I am, uh, I'm on the marketing team at ConvertKit. I do front-end development. I work on the marketing sites and, and, and handle a lot of that stuff, um, do website things. Um, and I started doing coding back when I was, I think, 12. Um, yeah. It was back when Macromedia Flash was, they were doing their whole thing and and, and I started learning action script to kind of do some animation things and uh, never really thought that I would enjoy doing that. And then just over time, just kind of did that a little bit more and made some websites here and there. And, um, and now that's my career, right? So there's, and there was even a period of time for like five or six years where I wasn't doing anything development related, like maybe doing some freelance stuff here and there, but like right. that wasn't the 
oh, I'm going to go pursue this career path and become a developer at a SaaS company. Like it just kind of molded over time. And, and I think honestly, if you ask most people about their work and hobbies and things, very rarely is it like, well, when I was 10, I decided I would do this thing. Right. And now that's exactly what I'm going to do. Right. Like you're not running a, a very successful landscaping company anymore, <laughs> but I could, you could, you could, if you wanted to. <laughs> yeah. So I always think of you as like a full stack creator, right? Cause you're a musician, uh, developer, podcaster, vlogger, you know, like whole range that's, of things. That's a really interesting <laughs> definition. That's huh, I like that yeah. title. Cause people always creator. say full stack engineer and you yeah, know, right. but Definitely then, not that. yeah, <laughs> but I think as you, you go on in other ways, um, that's, you can basically take on anything. And that's how I think of myself, mm. right. Of, uh, sales, marketing, design, a little bit of development, you know, uh, construction, you know, just whatever, right. like to go back to the question of, um, what we end up doing. I think it's the same thing of like, I've followed my interests at the time and just tried to keep adding skills. So instead of like being a narrow focus, which maybe I would have been a really successful musician. Sure. Not, I wouldn't have been a musician, but you know, <laughs> uh, it, like of staying with that narrow thing. Sure. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and I think that having, it, there's a lot of self-knowledge that comes into this, you know, especially about the pivot question. That's a really big question for a lot of people. Um, and I think also, especially in a time of uncertainty, right? There's a lot of people in a time of right. uncertainty right now of like, well, do I go all in on this thing while I've got the time or do I find something else because I've got to pay the bills? Um, you know, maybe I love doing this thing, but I'm kind of interested in this other thing. Um, right. I really don't know that there's a right or wrong answer. I, I think a lot of it just kind of comes really organically of deciding to do something you have to do something right like the only way that you pivot um our our friend sean mccabe likes to use the the phrase you can't steer a parked car right like right. i mean you can you're in there and you kind of haul on it a little <laughs> bit but it doesn't go anywhere right and so there has to be a little bit of movement there has to be some motion and yet you have to make some kind of a choice even if it's like i decided to pivot a little bit and it was the worst idea ever but now i'm kind of sliding back into this other thing that I wanted to do. Um, and sometimes it takes a couple months, sometimes it takes a couple of years, uh, but I don't know that there's a right or wrong answer. I think it just has yeah. often come from, and, and also in my case, a lot of it has come from my wife being the wiser of the two saying, oh, good Lord, please do not do that. <laughs> right. <laughs> so. Yeah, that, that is a big thing there. Um, yeah, and, and I've made plenty of pivots over time, but I, I think probably the biggest thing for both of us that makes those pivots make sense is stacking those skills up. Yeah. Um, okay, Sam, who's here in the chat, had a question uh, that he sent me on Facebook of the totally, totally different tangent. And then uh, we'll go to a remote work question after that. Cool. Um, and Sam's asking, has ConvertKit had any acquisition offers? What's that been like? Um, and this is actually the point where we tell you that ConvertKit has been acquired. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> of course, by, like, wait, by wait, Zoom, what? right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, no, so a couple acquisition offers. When we were early on, say maybe 10,000 a month in revenue, uh, 10 to 20,000 a month, uh, lead pages first reached out to acquire ConvertKit. So those conversations, I honestly think they wanted to just buy Drip. And they were just doing due diligence and having more, <laughs> more <laughs> conversations, you know? We, we feel like this is kind of got to get around the neighborhood. So we've got to, yeah. you know, we don't wanna, it's like, it's like, you know, inviting the kid to the party. You don't want to invite to the party, but you have exactly. to, then your mom will get you in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So there was those early conversations. Um, and then there've been other people that reach out, but not very seriously. And they're like, every so often there's private equity firms that like, well, every week there's private equity firms that email like cold emails and say like, Hey, like we're acquiring companies. We have a half billion dollar fund or whatever. And, and, uh, we just ignore those, but sometimes there are people who put out like a really, like they're actually serious. Uh, and we still ignore those just the same. So what, what is the value that stems out of that? I know that there's, I know a lot of people probably know about where the values that come in as it pertains to running a bootstrap bootstrapped company or not going with acquisitions. But I think there's a lot of people who look at that and go, if somebody offered you, you know, three quarters of a billion dollars for your company, I don't know. That I that. Let's, just <laughs> right. say, let's just say, right. I don't know why you would say no, but <laughs> right. let's just say someone offers you 
X amount of millions of dollars for your company for ConvertKit. Why, why is it that you're defaulting to no? And yeah. Cause a lot of people, I don't think understand that. Well, cause I think it goes back to actually to Emily's question of like, so what do you want to do with your life? And, uh, and when the answer is like, um, this, <laughs> you know, yeah. like this right here, uh, like building a small team of really fantastic people, having a big impact on, on like a huge community of creators. And then having this playground, right. Where this is, is probably the most fun thing for me is when we roll out a new feature or we design something or any of that, like it's going out to tens of thousands of people and, and people actually use it. And I've spent a lot of time of my career as a creator, like making something and no right. one, nobody sees it. Nobody pays attention to it because there's just no attention. And so I'm like to have a platform is such a privilege and to start over from scratch and you're not starting from scratch because you have the skills and you right. have the money. Um, but still like to have to rebuild a team, have to do all of that, um, that's not that fun. And uh, I've just seen plenty of entrepreneurs. Actually, uh, there's an entrepreneur here in Boise who sold a company called T-Sheets a few years ago. And, and he sold that massive successful exit. He retired. And then uh, he just, I just saw him post on Twitter yesterday or the day before that he's out of retirement. He's back. He's doing his next thing. Because like you don't. You got to do it. Yeah. <laughs> what are you, you going to do? He's like yeah. 45 maybe. I don't know. Right. He's not. Right. Um, and like retirement's not that exciting. What is exciting is creating. Yeah. And so, you know, that's, that's why uh, I'm all in on building this for a long time. And, and that's why yeah. it's so easy to just be like, no, thanks with an autoresponder right. to, uh, to uh, private equity people. Cool. Um, okay. You have a question that you've been getting a lot around remote work. You want to dive yeah. into that and we'll, we'll be on that topic for a bit. Yeah. So I, uh, I've, I've been, a lot of my friends have been reaching out to me uh, over the last few weeks, because obviously there's been this massive shift and all of these companies who have said for years that remote work wasn't possible for their company are now realizing that remote work is possible. Um, people are trying to figure out how to do it well. Um, and, you know, a, a buddy of mine texted me a couple of weeks ago and he said, uh, you know, we've gone from a 10% remote team, like right. as a company, it, to, we're now 100% remote. And so everything, all of our communication is being done like in Google chat and Google uh, meetings or whatever there, there's like a bunch of different things, and like threaded conversation. It's like, how do you deal with communication overload? You know, like everyone, cause now you can't just like, there's no, what's the word serendipitous moments right. as much, you know? And, uh, and everybody wants to tell you all of the things and you have to get all the information and, um, and there's a lot of different, uh, I would say, philosophies about how to accomplish getting the things that you need to get and, and communicating what you need to communicate. But a lot of people are struggling with that. And, and so we asked me about that. Um, and yeah, so what is your, some of your top recommendations for that? What works? Uh, well, I think there's, um, there's kind of two, I think there, there are two things that, well, I guess I would say three things. Um, the first is you need a way to... Um, kind of filter out the things that you don't need. So um, for a lot of people who are going to remote work, especially for companies, as they try to consolidate all of their information, it's all in one place. Um, and you need to have a place, you need to have a way to filter all of that. Um, email doesn't work very well for that because it's literally just all in your inbox. It's all in one right. spot. Um, we use Basecamp at ConvertKit, which is super, super helpful for doing project management and for doing things like Hey, for the marketing, the marketing site, we have our own projects that we can go in, set up to-do lists, have conversations about this. And it's narrowed into what exactly what we want to talk about. And I can filter away all of the other things I don't necessarily need in my head. And I can go search for that stuff or people can bring me into those conversations. But um, it's about, you know, making sure that each thing has its own place. Um, and then we also use Slack for more real-time communication when necessary. Um, so what my recommendation to him was, you need to have a place where you connect with your whole team if you need to, your direct team, sorry, your direct team. Um, so in my case, it's the marketing team. Uh, and then all, you also need to, there has to be some level where you can get to your work by yourself. And a lot of that just takes discipline, right? Because 
um, you know, for many of us, I mean, we have a new team member who's all the way across the world on the other yeah. side, upside down, and it, it is in tomorrow, right? So now all of a sudden there's these synchronization issues that you have to kind of get around. Um, but the, the, the first thing that happens I have found with remote work is when you, you start working from home, you feel like you have to get all of the info in. And that's not necessarily true. There needs to be a, a good way to align what you're working on so that you can collect up the information that you need to from the people that you need to uh, collect it from. So, um, so having a place where you can kind of filter away all of those things, I think is really helpful. Um, yeah, and then, and then just discipline for sure. I think having, well, so one thing we've talked about before on this podcast, right. It's the idea of working public. Uh, we've talked about it as a creator, you know, showcasing those, those things, but as you're working with a team, you know, it, you're doing the same thing within the company of putting out like, dropping notes in Slack. Here's what I'm working on. Here's what's happening and all that. And it's not to anyone in particular, right. but it's leaving those breadcrumbs so that someone can come through, scan through it and be like, don't care, don't care, not relevant. Ah, that's what I needed. Yeah. You know? And then the other thing that you're saying is like, feel free to opt out of those things. Like, I don't need to know exactly what one of our engineering squads is doing. Totally. You know, and I could spend all day, you know, if I subscribe to every yeah. Slack channel, you know? And so, I mean, a couple of important things would be, leave Slack channels, like just feel free to leave. Someone will come find you and tell you if, if there's something important there. Um, and then like, I really liberally mute channels as well. Yes. Just slash mute. And it takes care of that. Yep. If you leave a channel muted for quite a while and don't notice then great, you can leave it. Right. And then the last thing that we always do, and we had a discussion today uh, in Slack about what's proper etiquette on at mentioning someone mm. when you know or like, should you think about, okay, I'm in the U S they're in Europe. Okay. So that's 7 PM. So, you know, if I at mention them, are they going to get notified and come on? What we basically came to is, uh, and people have different opinions on this. My opinion on it is everyone should be really aggressive about turning off notifications Yes, and being like, Hey, I'm signing out for the day. Yes. Like you mentioned me all you want. I won't see it till tomorrow. Yes. If you do need something, text me. Yes. Like, that trips it over the bar from like, hey, Nathan, here's this thing. Like, look at it. Like, make sure you see it, but something tomorrow versus like, everything's this, broken. Everything's broken, which if everything was broken, I have the wrong person to talk yeah, to. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, right. What are you going to do? You're going to call <laughs> right. the infrastructure guys. <laughs> yeah. So please just directly call them. Yeah, right. Um, but just like Emily said in the chat just now of, uh, yeah, you're responsible for your own notification settings. Yep. Do that. And then- you know, set the information overload. Yes. Um, and, and I think there's something to be said for, you know, um, you know, maybe not at mentioning everybody in every oh, single, okay. Message, that's et cetera, a different, et cetera, thing. right? Like at channel or, is not okay. So yeah, I mean, you know, maybe not like the best <laughs> idea. Right. Um, so there's certain things I think, I mean, but it's literally like, if you think about being in an office space, you wouldn't stand in the middle of the place <laughs> and start yelling at everybody to, right. you know, to get their attention, to get your point across. Right. Um, unless you're like, there's no donuts in the break room and then <laughs> correct. <laughs> and in, that, in that particular case, you must do that. Yeah. Um, but I totally agree. Like I am responsible for, for filtering out or blocking anything that's coming in towards me. Right. Like yeah. that's if, if people are, it's not everyone else's fault that I have communication overload. It's not right. their fault that I have, like, I, I turned off badges on my phone years oh, yeah. ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I just can't. Like I think there's like one or two that I still allow, um, but I just it because I think about it, right? When you see the notification, you see your name, the thing comes down. Right. Um, so I almost always keep my phone in do not disturb mode. Like I control that. So as it pertains to Slack stuff, I control that. But um, I think there's also just a flow that you get into with your workmates, you know, and some of that just takes time, right? Like I've been working remote for almost five years, mm -hmm. uh, a little over five years actually. And you just kind of get into the groove and sometimes you're like, okay, I know that this person operates this way. Uh, like, so for me, I work most closely with Charlie, our designer, and I know that I can message her. I can D I can DM her anytime, but that does not necessarily mean that she's going to write back to me. Yep. You know? And sometimes I'm just like, Hey, I question for you. Here's this thing. And I, maybe I need the answer, like, cause I'm working on it right now, but if I don't get it till tomorrow, it's fine. Like if I, if it's urgent, I can text her. 
right? Mm -hmm. And then, I mean, you don't want to do that and be like, hey, just text anybody whenever. Like, I think there's just kind of an understanding for that. That yeah, that's, that's how you true. you escalate it to the next yes. to the next level. Yeah. Um, let's do a couple of quick questions before we jump into our creator of the day and resource sure. of the day. Uh, Becky asked, uh, "How is COVID nineteen affecting customers?" Mm -hmm. Eric and I touched on this a little bit. Um, like, I think we're seeing a bunch of different things, but I'll touch on two aspects of it. One for on the ConvertKit side, we're seeing the highest growth we've ever seen and the highest churn we've ever seen mm. simultaneously. They're canceling each other out. We're growing. We're overall in a good place, but like churn in March was very, very high. Yeah. Um, and, uh, but it was still a really, really solid month. Something that I'm seeing on the other side, that's kind of interesting. Uh, that I'm seeing from uh, customers and the broader creator community is that everyone who's selling really high dollar, high ticket courses, they're seeing problems right now, mm, right? Yeah. People, a lot of the $2,000 courses, the $5,000 courses yeah. that you'd see out there, like that's in an uncertain economic outlook, that's not getting purchased right now. Yeah, I And I think that. for a lot of people who run lean teams, you know, it, it's just them or them and a small team of a couple people that sucks, but you can, you can adapt to it, to that drop. I, I think the people that are going to have a hard time are the ones running really big teams, the, the information marketers and people like that running big companies who uh, are relying on, on that revenue. And I think yeah. that's going to see a big drop and they're going to have to like change, like change some things and come out with some 30, 50, hundred dollar uh, products in order to yeah. make some of that up on volume. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Anything else? Yeah, no, I just see that. I even see that in myself, you know? Um, and I think there's a couple of things in addition to all of those is I'm also seeing a greater influx of encouragement for people to support the smaller businesses. Yeah. Um, whether or not everyone can do that. Um, mm -hmm. you know, yesterday my wife texted me and she goes, today's a bad day to have craving for like really specific french fries and i mean it was right yeah but i called a, a local place and i said hey are you guys doing delivery or pickup or whatever and um and they were so i ordered a couple orders of french fries went down there put on my mask and you know went in and got the fries and brought them back and, and i was just like you know i probably could have done the drive through at mcdonald's because they're still doing that but right you know these businesses they're closed right. Mm -hmm. Or just like barely open. And so there's still, there's kind of this feeling of, I, I want to do that a little bit more. Um, but on the other side, for people who have small businesses trying to run things, um, let me, let me say it this way. There are people who are running like these small businesses and there's these other larger creators, like you were talking about wanting to sell things like courses or things right. to these people, but these people aren't buying anything because it's, there's a lot of uncertainty, which then makes this kind of uncertain. Right. Right. Um, so long, I'm not an economist, econo economist, <laughs> economist, whatever. Yeah. I'm not a guy who understands money, even though I have to do my taxes tomorrow. Um, but I, uh, I, I really don't know where all of that's going to go from, but I think that, that we're going to start seeing those smaller, like smaller amount items, or right. we're going to see what more of what Sean Blanc was doing, right. Where he's just like, Hey, we've got this course and we know it can help people. Right. I would love to help out. And, and I think we're going to, there's going to be a lot of um, reciprocity that happens from those things. Um, but you know, yep. people are just canceling stuff, you know, like I've, I've canceled things in the last couple of weeks. Um, That's how it goes. I, I feel like I need to start my own streaming service though, because I feel like <laughs> streaming services are like, they're making all the money right now. <laughs> I think that's probably true. Well, on the note of talking about creators, let's transition. Let's go to our creator of the day, Corey. Who do you have for us? Feel free to uh, do a live, you know, like a screen share if you have them pulled up or just talk about it. Uh, I'll way. just talk about him. It's, okay. it's a, it's a YouTuber um, that I've been following recently. I, behind the scenes, I have been slowly pouring and drinking my own coffee because I'm really weird about coffee. Like I do the, I weigh my beans, I grind them. I have specific yep. things. Aeropress or pour over or what? Well, I recently purchased a, a Hario V60. Okay, um, I don't know what that is. Which is it a, which sounds is like a, a like a motorcycle a, engine. It's basically it's motorcycle <laughs> engine for for coffee. Um, anyway, so for I get worried soul. about coffee. Yes, yeah. <laughs> so I I really love my coffee, and I've recently started watching a YouTuber named James Hoffman. Uh, and you can literally just go on YouTube and Google James Hoffman, and uh, 
he's he's really really great um he does reviews he does tutorials on like how to make really good coffee he just is deeply passionate about the subject as i as am i um i mean yesterday i think it was yesterday he released a, a video about a like a 299 pound um all-in-one espresso machine from aldi which is like this little supermarket yeah. place and about halfway through he goes this is just I hate everything about it. Like I hate, I hate, this is what's causing climate change is terrible products like this. And I was like, wow, but he's like, he's really cool. And he's got like this really gentle presence. And uh, I feel like right now I just really am enjoying more of like the softer, gentler kind of things on the internet and, and with people. So highly recommend if you like coffee or the are interested in the subject or just want someone nice to listen to talk about stuff that he's passionate about. Um, yeah, that's him. Um, that's yeah, really here's cool. the, uh, how bad could it be? Yeah, it's really good. Ninety-nine <laughs> pound espresso machine. Yeah. Love it. Um, my creator of the day is, uh, a tiny house hotel called tiny estates. And I just follow them on Instagram. I have no connection to them other than that. I follow them on Instagram mm. and need my long-term dream of starting a tiny house hotel. Um, different people have different problems and addictions. Uh, mine at the moment is tiny houses and I may or may not have just purchased another custom ordered trailer to build another tiny house. <laughs> How so, far along are you on your current one? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't bring that. Like just because I'm not <laughs> done with the one doesn't mean I can't start another. I'm just asking <laughs> no. the question. I feel attacked. <laughs> no. Um, no, I'm getting really, really close. Uh, I was actually last night was digging a trench uh, so I can run electrical out to where it's going to be. So nice. maybe three weeks away, um, wow. I'll, I'll have to show some photos, but, uh, so you're saying you're ready to buy your, th your third trailer now. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the second trailer hasn't even arrived yet. Well, but, I mean, uh, yeah. Anyway, tiny estates, uh, if you want to follow a cool tiny house hotel and dream about places awesome. that you could visit, but can't, um, all right. What's your resource? What do you have? Uh, my resource today? today, actually, I will share my screen for this one. Uh, if I can figure out how to do it. It's how long funny. have you been using Zoom? How long have I been using computers, right? <laughs> it's, it's one of my favorite things on any of our meetings is to watch people on our team who are absolute wizards go like, how do I do this? <laughs> Whenever there's people watching. Every time. Uh, so I'm a, I'm a developer, I'm a nerd, and um, the resource that I really want to, to get out there and let people know about is uh, the service called Netlify. It's it's basically a hosting platform, but it's free. You can connect it directly to GitHub. Um, again, this is slightly more like tiny, more advanced level. Like it's not Squarespace where you're just going to go and like make your website. But right. um, for someone who's doing development actively, it, it was, I, 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 I was really surprised at how easy it was to like connect up one of my, like the sites I'd built on GitHub connected this thing and just have it live for free. It's got, it's, it's, you know, it has domain.netlify.com. Um, mm -hmm. but it's super, super easy. You literally deploy your site in seconds. Um, I just, uh, I was talking with my friend Kyle Adams, um, a couple of days ago and we're starting up uh, a podcast and I was yeah, like, give well, a full shout out, like talk about the podcast. I had that uh, for an, a second later, but now cool. it's time I'll, to talk about it. Yeah. I'll talk about that in just a sec. Um, but I, uh, I was like, well, we could use one of these other services and pay the 15 or 20 bucks a month, but why don't we just start with something free? Mm -hmm. uh, just bio, do bio domain, use something for free that we can kind of host and do our own thing with. And so I got something set up, threw it on Netlify, and it was up in, in the middle of our conversation. And it was uh, super, super cool. So um, yeah, so that's- Yeah, uh, that sounds good. All right, continue the pitch for the podcast though. Uh, you, what's it called? Yeah. What, what website should people go to? So Commuteless is the name of our show. So me and Kyle Adams used to do a podcast um, a number of years ago about, um, about uh, building a brand. And we're starting a new show about working from home. So there's obviously a lot of people who are moving to this, uh, moving to this world of remote work. And, um, and we are interested in helping people learn how to work from home or improve working from home with less stress and more freedom. Um, so they can live life on their terms, right? So that's kind of the tagline of the show. So we're starting recording tomorrow. We're very excited about it. Um, the website's commuteless.fm. Um, that's where all the, 
we're, we'll get on all of the major like iTunes and Spotify and Google play and all of that. Um, but this is kind of going to be where it's at. And uh, so for anybody who's interested in improving their work from home life, or if you've got a family that all of a sudden now you're around 24 yep. seven, uh, or if you've just never worked remotely at all, um, we want to help you do that and, and help you live your best life while, while doing that. So commutelist.fm, it's going to be our show. Sounds good. All right. Uh, my resource of the day is just a, a novel that I really enjoyed. Uh, I read it late last fall. It's called Beneath the Scarlet Sky. Nice. If you're looking for something to get into this weekend, uh, pick it up on Kindle or the audiobook. Um, but it's uh, based on a true story of a boy uh, in, growing up in Italy during World War II. And uh, it's really, really good. It's one of those, like, you start reading it, can't put it down. So definitely uh, check that out, Beneath the Scarlet Sky. I think I have this. I think it was, I think I either have it on Audible or on Kindle. It was like a free option one month or something like that. And, oh, nice. And I was like, oh, it's this good. looks interesting. And so I, have, I, I haven't gone past the first, like, couple of pages, but because um, I'm not a very good reader. But <laughs> maybe I'll check it out on 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 audiobook that'd be cool yeah you should definitely check it out all right well that's it for our show today thanks for uh, tuning in and hanging out with us uh we'll be back on monday barrett will be back from vacation then uh but we're gonna keep bringing in you know more friends team members coworkers, uh into uh into the show so thanks for tuning in and we will see you later